So now the Eradicators have been hit by a 5 point nerf, are they still the best anti-tank in the Space Marine Codex, or might we start to see other options shining through? Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're discussing the change to Eradicators, and whether or not we'll actually see less of them on the board, or whether Space Marine lists will just continue to field them, albeit with a few less Marines on the battlefield. We'll start by saying that I'm quite glad that Games Workshop made the change, they were quite obviously one of the least balanced units in Warhammer 40k right from when they came out, vastly more efficient firepower than virtually anything else in the Codex, and with a respectable defensive profile to boot. So in the recent points changes in FAQ, they increased Eradicators from 40 points to 45 points. A fairly reasonable sized nerf, it means that they are just basically 11% less efficient than they were previously. Whenever points are changed in 40k, it kind of has a double effect. Point for point, they're 11% less durable, and have 11% less damage output. Now rather than the 120 points it would cost you for your minimum size squad of Eradicators, you'll now be paying 135 still putting out 6 melter shots at 24 inches, and you can also upgrade one of them to have a multi-melter. Generally this will make them a little bit more efficient in terms of damage output, but a bit less efficient in terms of durability. Just for sake of comparison, here are the average stats on the Eradicator squad. Your now 135 point costing squad will do around about 10 wounds to a toughness 7 vehicle if they're out of melter range, or more or less 15 if they're within, though any sort of invul save does significantly blunt their damage. In terms of durability, Gravis armor is fairly all round tough, this will take about 81 bolter hits to gun down the squad, 24 heavy bolter shots, or 7 last cannons. Of course on top of that they do have access to the excellent defensive primaris stratagems, including transhuman physiology and unyielding in the face of the foe, which can mean that they're only wounded on a 4+, plus, or have an extra plus 1 to their save against damage worn weapons. Despite the nerf, there's no getting around the fact that they're still very efficient. The big question is that are they still the most efficient in the Space Marine army, or can we find some other units or combos to step up and take their place? In particular, I wanted to highlight two of the closest analogues to Eradicators that we have, attack bikes with multi-melters, and also the Devastator squad with multi-melters. Typically, multi-melters do still tend to be the highest efficiency damage output weapons in the Marine Codex when you're trying to deal with toughness 7 or 8 armour, though things like las cannons and other strength 9 weapons do gain a lot of ground when they are firing against really heavy armour and things that are toughness 8. Typically though, on the vast majority of units, between the extra shot that the multi-melter gets, the extra AP, and the extra damage at half range, they are typically far more efficient than las cannons. So first up we have attack bikes with multi-melters, these are 55 points each compared with the Eradicator's 45. In terms of stat lines and damage output, they're actually remarkably close, they'll still put out two multi-melter shots at 24 inch range, and it does mean that they're a little bit less efficient at anti-tank than the Eradicators, dishing out 5.7 wounds to toughness 7 vehicles per 100 points, compared with the Eradicators which drop at 6.9. However, the attack bikes do have some significant advantages in that they're really fast unlike the Eradicators, and each one also mounts a twin bolt gun, which is a pretty handy amount of small arms fire. It means there'll be significantly more use if you're in a horde matchup, compared with the Eradicators, who will still only be plugging away with their 6 shots. They're also fairly similar defensively as well, They've got 4 wounds at toughness 5 where the Eradicators have 3, so they're a little bit tougher against small arms fire, but perhaps a bit more susceptible to very heavy anti-tank weapons. Probably the biggest difference in durability actually comes to losing those strats, not getting transhuman or plus 1 to saves, is going to mean that they're going to fold just that little bit easier if your opponent does try to focus them down. To be honest, with the Eradicator nerf I could see a fair few people swapping to using attack bikes, both units certainly seem to have their merits. Excellent movement is going to mean that you have more choice of targets, the bolt of fire makes them a bit more dual roll, though still for dedicated anti-tank purposes and defence purposes, the Eradicators slightly win. They also have the advantage of being infantry not bikes, making better use of cover. So interesting trade-offs between these two, but currently I'm feeling that attack bikes are looking stronger than ever. One of the other obvious competitors for Eradicators I wanted to mention are Space Marine Devastators. You can get 5 Devastators with 4 Multi-Melters and an Armorium Cherub for 175 points, so they'll be putting out 10 Melter Shots on the first turn that they get to shoot, and 4 of them, the one that gets to shoot twice, should have Ballistic Skill 2 plus as well for the Sergeant's Signum. Now even if these guys are moving into position and suffering the minus 1 to hit, they actually get slightly better anti-tank than Eradicators when they're firing with the Cherub the first time that they shoot. They get 7.5 wounds on a Toughness 7 vehicle, compared with the Eradicators 6.9. Of course, if for whatever reason they're not moving, they're going to catch up significantly, will be far better with the Cherub, and will still slightly outshine the Eradicators even when they've used it. 
In particular, the multi-melter devastators could be really at handy in armies such as ultramarines, where all the infantry get to move and shoot as if they hadn't moved, provided they're in the tactical doctrine. These guys could perhaps be a very solid option, turning up from a strategic reserve, or maybe even coming out of a drop pot. There is still a bit of a trade-off, I'm afraid, though. The Devastators are pretty much weaker in defence across the board. They're not even significantly tougher against things like Lath Cannons. I will certainly get picks apart by damage to weapons and small arms fire that bit quicker. Plus, they don't have access to any defensive strats, so they're a bit more of a high damage output but low durability option. You could potentially include a tanking body or two, though, if you didn't want to be losing multi-melters right away. Overall, I'd say that Attack Bikes and Devastators do come pretty darn close to beating Eradicators now and I believe that they are better choices in certain situations. If you want a swifter, more mobile army with the attack bikes, or if you're playing something like Ultramarines with the ability to move and shoot for no penalty with Devastators. In general though, it's still hard to go wrong with the sheer amount of damage output and durability that the Eradicators have, even despite this nerf. In terms of other options within the Codex, I'll admit I haven't gone through everything else in terms of ranged anti-tank marine weapons, I would bear in mind that if you want a little bit more anti-tank in the list, Redemptor Dreadnoughts with Macroplasma Incinerators are pretty reasonable choices. They won't really directly compete with Eradicators in terms of the numbers that we're seeing here, just because in addition to that Macroplasma Incinerator, you're also buying an incredibly tough walker with a bunch of other guns and combat capability as well. Overall, I'd say that the Redemptor is a very competitive choice, but it's not going to win in a straight contest of anti-tank damage output compared with Eradicators. Unfortunately, throughout the rest of the marine decks, quite a lot of options are kind of repressed just because of how good the Eradicators and these other Melter options are. Eliminators with last fusels are still nowhere near, I'm afraid, nor is the Gladiator Lancer particularly hampered by not being cool. The Fast Strike Servo Turret with last talons can be good against Toughness 8 armor and can actually win against those targets a little bit, but it's usually going to be more fragile and of course it's very slow moving. Finally, Heavy Hellblasters can actually compete against Toughness 8 armor somewhat, particularly as they have a bit of a range advantage, but against anything Toughness 7 or below, they're going to come up short, they're less accurate on the move, and of course have the chance of killing themselves with their own weapons, which isn't usually good. So overall, my take is that Eradicators are still going to be played regularly in Marine lists. For their role at mid-ranged anti-tank units, they're still arguably the best in the Codex, so I'm afraid that we haven't seen the last of them yet. I'll be interested to hear your thoughts down in the comments below, particularly if there's any other units that you're considering more now they've gone up in points. Definitely let me know if there's anything that I've missed. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics, where we'll certainly be keeping the 40k content coming with regular videos pretty much every day. Finally, if you have been watching a lot of these videos recently and would like to help support the channel, I'd just like to mention that I have a Patreon page which you can find down in the video description below. Making all of these videos does take a fair amount of time, so if you are enjoying a lot, any support is massively appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, such as seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the channel's monthly prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support the channel, then the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.